So this video is going to talk a little bit about um, metabolic changes and um, ocean warming and then coral bleaching. So first thing we're going to look at is habitat loss. So the cause of ocean warming. Um, big idea here, as the um, atmosphere warms, that warmth is slowly going to get transferred to the ocean and the ocean is slowly going to warm. Gases dissolve less in warmer water bodies. So you're going to see your dissolved oxygen levels. Um, you're not going to be able to dissolve as much oxygen. CO2 also won't dissolve. And so when we talk, we'll talk about feedback loops. And so there's some thoughts about, again, how warming, accelerating will cause, um, continue to cause more issues. But the cause of ocean warming is basically as the atmosphere warms, it's going to warm up the ocean. And, um, and again, the interconnection between the two of those. Um, if you think of that, if you're sitting somewhere near something that's very hot, so you take something out of the oven and that's uh, the hot plate of cookies or the hot cookie sheet is sitting there and you're sitting nearby, you feel the warmth radiating out of it. Same basic idea. So the warmth of the atmosphere warms up the ocean. It's a slow process because the ocean is very big, but eventually you do get ocean warming. What happens then? Well, as the ocean warms, it starts changing habitats in the water. And here, like with the polar bear is the classic example. The picture here on, um, over here on the right shows this polar bear. And this is traditionally how polar bears have hunted is they sit by these breathing holes. So seals come and seals will have to pop up under miles and miles of ice and they need to breathe air. So they pop up at these little holes and they will breathe, okay? And so they get their air. A polar bear blends into the ice and the polar bear just sits there. And when the seal pops up to take a breath, it can swat the seal and get the seal and then eat it for its food. What has, you see here on this other side is the polar bear. Um, he's wandering and there's much more open water there. Okay. He's going to like, there's a little bit of ice, but there's a lot more open water. So the seal is more likely to surface in a variety of places. And it's going to be much harder for the polar bear to hunt the seal down. And so you're shifting this habitat and making the survival of the polar bear much, much more difficult. So that's just one example of like a habitat loss that is resulting from ocean warming. Another thing is uh, you can have metabolic changes. This is a very complicated graph um, and it's talking about this hypoxia and to hypoxia tolerance. Um, hypoxia is low levels of dissolved oxygen. So as temperature increases, as we have over here, as temperature increases, the dissolved oxygen decreases. Um, and so that means species are going to have to be more active to get the dissolved oxygen they need to survive that's going to cause more stress on them. So they need to be more active to get the oxygen that they need. And so that's where they get this uh, hypoxia. Hypoxia is being able to survive in low levels of dissolved oxygen, this hypoxia tolerance. And essentially what they're finding is as the temperature warms, you're seeing this relationship as the temperature warms, the um, hypoxia uh, tolerance of species is going down. And um, that's a problem because again, they're gonna be more stressed and that's gonna impact their metabolism and their ability to survive. So that is, um, this is from a research study, the sources I have, and it's in the presentation if you wanna see it from us, the, from science, from Science Magazine. Um, but this is one of the impacts of metabolic changes. Um, reproductive changes, um, basically certain temperatures will trigger um, swordfish and uh, tuna and other species to release their sperm and eggs to then be fertilized. And when the temperature is off, that can cause and uh, interfere with these, these spawning patterns. And here, again, I copied this from one of the sources. Uh, I should have quoted that. Um, studies have shown that increased ocean temperatures signal earlier reproduction development in the spring spawning species. Okay, and this can shorten the spawning uh, period leading to less opportunity for reproduction. So again, you could get less species that are able to, or less babies that are being born. Autumn spawning species, warmer temperatures delay the spawning, and then um, 
then again, this could lead to um, less reproductive success. So um, you can see definitely reproductive changes also. So these are warming of the ocean. These are some specific uh, instance or specific consequences we can see of this. Another big one is coral bleaching. So coral, uh, coral reefs, remember, are located in the tropics. Um, around the equator and essentially it's already going to be warm there but as we have ocean uh, as we have a uh, climate change and global warming the atmosphere is going to warm the ocean and as it warms the ocean what happens in fact i'm going to go like three slides down here oops oops we're going to pause that for a second we're going to go to the next slide here you see this is the sea surface temperature anomaly anomaly means basically a deviation from the norm and so zero is kind of what is considered the norm averaging over time and so we had cooler than average for a long time here and then we had a little spike here but now we're seeing this big trend where we're seeing the sea surface temperature is um, warmer than normal and again this is in the coral sea and so what we're seeing now is this warming temperature is causing oops, again oops, we're gonna pause you is going to cause this thing called coral bleaching so what happens is healthy coral okay it's a symbiotic relationship between like an algae and a um, organism that builds the shell and it's healthy when it gets stressed though so when it becomes too warm what happens is the um, algae is basically like ejected from the coral and that's what is called bleached coral. Um, bleached coral can reverse it. So if the temperature goes back down, the, the algae, it's called a zoanthalae, can actually get, go back into the coral and it can reset. But if it stays bleached too long, or the so the temperature stays too warm too long, what will happen is it will get covered in like um, algae and then it's going to basically be destroyed. So here, this image actually shows healthy coral and kind of they're blowing it up. So you can see the skeleton and then the zoanthale are healthy in there. Then it becomes bleached and it's going to spit that out. And we'll see this in this next video. It's going to spit out uh, the zoanthale and it's going to be bleached. If temperature goes back down, it can go back in. But if it doesn't, what will eventually happen is, and it doesn't even take that long, the bleached skeleton gets covered in this algae and then it's going to be um, done for. So this video here is from National Geographic and I'm going to actually mute the sound on it because you don't need the sound. But what you're seeing here is actual coral bleaching. And here I just kind of jumped ahead in this a little bit. But if you watch, you'll see kind of these puffs up here that happen. And that is actually the coral bleaching. There you go. You see kind of it spits some of it out. It's like spitting out the zoanthale. So that is actually what is happening. And again, it can be reversed if the temperature goes back down, but it you don't have a long time. And then what will happen is it will just, um, again, you can see it kind of spitting out those puffs of it. So it's kind of creepy, kind of crazy uh, what is happening. And it's a, it's a definite big concern. Um, in, in this. And again, that's due to this warming temperature is what we've linked coral bleaching to. Um, that is warming ocean temperatures and the impacts of that and coral bleaching. Hope that was helpful.